This is Gilligan on May 26, 2022. And I thought I would check in after I added all that semi-sifted aged manure, plus probably only about a dozen or so worms that were in the manure that I sifted, had overwintered in a container actually on our driveway, just a tote on our driveway full of aging manure. This is Gilligan and you see how the manure built up the level, which if you remember from my overwintering experiences with Gilligan, every time I check on them almost, the level has gone down. So I have very limited ability to get around the side here. Oh, look, we've got, uh, we've got one crawling right over there on the top of the burlap. Can you see that? He's like, she took the lid off. I got to find a place to hide. Ha ha. Anyway, so I have very limited ability to get around the side because we're expanding the sidewalk. And right now the bricks that we're expanding it with are all stacked next to Gilligan. So this is as far as I can go on my mobility device. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little handy dandy spaghetti lifter and just as far as I can reach and just see what's going on in here. This, of course, is the cardboard on the top. We might get a sprinkle of a shower today, which I'm great if Gilligan gets a sprinkle of a shower because my experience, again, with Gilligan over the winter is this bin runs dry. So there's a, a worm. Oops, I disturbed a worm right on the top. Lovely crimson colored worm. Oop, trying to escape. And there he goes down into, down into the material. Uh, we added the moss off our garage roof. I added a lot of egg powder to compensate for what I presume would be a change in the pH of the bin. But let's just see what's going on. This is an old brown bag that had bird seed in it. And we emptied it, of course. And But I presume the bag is compostable. Uh, the presence of that worm would tend to agree with me that the bag is compostable. He might crawl out because I've got this cardboard hanging off. So I'll just make sure he detours back into the bin. When he gets all the way down, he's going down like a waterfall. That's really interesting. Down, down, down he goes. Yeah, they don't like the light. Anyway, this is the material that I came to see here today. This beautiful, evenly textured material that is the sifted horse manure. I just want to know whether our worms that were in Gilligan have come up exploring this material. So let's just do a little dig see. So high I can't dig it much to the side without dumping large amounts of it over. So you see that it does seem to be dry but I also, in turning over, I guess maybe this is where Landon put the roofing material. I do see a worm there. So it's not abundant with worms. Oh, needles. And it's easier if I take them out of the bins now. I've found if I leave these needles in, even though they you know, obviously contribute to microbial diversity. They end up in my vegetable garden and I don't like them in there. Yeah, it's just, the material's gonna tumble over. There's the egg powder that I added everywhere. It's sprinkled everywhere, but that's just a big clump of it. And there are worms. They're obviously feeding on something on that cardboard could be a you know food that I added or maybe they're just starting to get interested in the material on the top and they're working their way into it. I actually think this material on the top will benefit from a little bit of a rain shower so I'm kind of excited that we're going to get maybe a sprinkle. Oops there there if there were worms in that chunk it, they are now living in the outdoor world which is fine by me. They are in the part of our garden that has, well, let me just show you, has right over there is our pile of aging 
horse manure and behind me is our three composts two open and one of the rotator drum type that obviously the worms won't be able to get into but you know wherever they go they will have safe harbor here let me just zoom out again it's easier for me to hold the camera steady i think when i'm zoomed out a little i'll push instead of pull so there are worms in there not a lot i think they're deeper where the moisture is where the moisture or the food is so are the worms so as i go down it will get moister and yep yeah, there's a worm worms 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 in there worms in there so they are getting through this and you know I guess I just need to let them be and trust that the addition of this moss that was growing from our roof oops that looked like a maggot of some kind let me see if I can see him again um, uh, the addition of this material from our roof doesn't seem to have deleteriously affected the worms they are still underneath it but crawling around looking foraging they're still there they're just not on the top I was kind of hoping that they would like the aged manure and come up but you know the fact that they're down there finishing off the old material that's not a bad thing either there they are on the side finishing off material on the side and look at I mean he's gonna go down but look at the beautiful color of these worms they are living on mostly natural materials mostly leaves and manure and many of them were found in leaf piles and manure piles yes I did add you know, worms that had been in Gilligan before to this pile. But, you know, the manure itself comes with a lot of worms. So, you know, now I have been watching my old videos on Gilligan. And I, and that's how I realized that, yes, Gilligan runs dry. Contrary to what you might think with no drainage holes in a large tub like this, Gilligan actually runs dry. So... I'm more confident in leaving the lid off now, but I've also learned that at some point I had to make the decision to stop feeding and let the material finish. I don't know how long this moss-like material is going to take to process, but I think other than feeding rapidly consumable items, I think Gilligan will be done. Well, let me say rapidly consumable items or items that I wouldn't be opposed if they end up in my garden, generally speaking. So, you know, items like more of that beautifully sifted manure. If the worms end up coming into that material, maybe when it gets a little bit more moist, there's a worm there and he's actually on the surface of the manure. Maybe he just fed off, fell off the cardboard, but they're not opposed to it, certainly. Another needle. <laughs> These are pine tree needles, about seven inches long, double needles. They're everywhere. That's an interesting story, actually. The large pine tree in our yard, uh, I'll do a video on it one day. It was brought over from China, apparently, in the 1800s as part of the city of Victoria's landscaping program. And our property is adjacent to a park that the city used to heal in. They brought the, the materials in by water and then they brought them to the park and healed the material in until they could use it for the parks. Well, they never came back in time and this tree took root, as did a, several of its friends that were presumably on the same barge coming from China. Anyway, the so the tree's been here, uh, you know, coming up uh, 
you know, 175 years, say. We don't really know when in the 1800s. So the idea being that it looks like it's got two huge trunks, but we actually had a forester in our yard one day and he looked up and he told me that story and he said, you know, your tree is sinking. And since we've lived here, which is now 32 years, the tree has probably sunk about six feet into the ground. And he said, it's the weight of this massive pine tree that is sinking down into the ground. I just find that fascinating. So those needles are not, it's not a native tree to British Columbia, but it's here now. Doesn't send up babies, as far as I know. We don't have little seedlings sprouting everywhere. So I don't know quite how this tree is gonna propagate itself, but it's obviously several hundred years old and, and just really dominates our backyard, both in its graceful presence, but also those needles, bit of a, bane for any avid gardener having pine needles dropping constantly into your into your garden. Anyway everyone that's the check-in on Gilligan and a little story about our pine tree and I will show it in its full glory in another video. Bye for now.